Hello, it's Jesse here, and welcome back to Jesse's Vintage Garage, and we're working on a 1975 Norton Mark III. Um, we're going to be tearing apart the primary system here. What has happened is this, the sprag in this, in this bike has shelled out pretty much. It doesn't work no more when you push the starter button. This was a 14, uh, we call it a 14 bone, or we kind of yeah. like call it that because of the, the bearing kind of looks like a bone shape. Got little, like little bow ties or bones. Yeah, like that. And there's a couple different ones. You can get an 18 and you can get a 14, but this was original 14. This is an 18. This one's 18? Yeah, this one. We took this one out, and this one was only less than a year old. Right. And it worked It worked for, I don't know, 1,000 miles. And then it quit working. And so then we found a brand new 14 bone which is what they used originally, and we put it in, and it only lasted two weeks. But it's still, it's still, I mean, it's still great. What would it cause that? Well, I don't, that just sounds crazy piece, to me. <laughs> this piece here, this tolerance here gets worn down, and this tolerance inside of here gets worn down. from. And then what happens when the bearing's in here, then when the one turns, it just slips. So that's what happens. That's what happens to them. So so far we got the it cover turned, off, and we got it, it drained, of course. And we're gonna be putting all new components in here from uh, C and W. Yeah, C and W. Yeah, that's right. And it's gonna be a Colorado Norton Works. It'll be a nice upgrade here for this. But these are the parts that are gonna go in the new Sprag, which looks completely different. It's got a different angle to each one of them. Like the whole shape, second. the whole shape of this sprag is completely different, and um, but this is what we're going to put in. So we already took the cover off and took out the clutch because it's got to all come apart. But that's all that's all straightforward stuff. All right, well let's get started here, I guess. Finish moving some of this stuff here. Be taking the, the stator off here. Stators first. screwdriver probably <laughs>
Now we got to bend these tabs over on all four of these. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. There's these washers. One of the tabs is over this way and one will be on the nut to hold the nuts solid and tight. Yeah. And that one's holding it to the component. Yes. So we'll, very, we'll knock that out real quick and then we'll get ready to pull this off. We'll come back here. Before we can get this off of here, we got to take this off because that's held right. in with that. We'll talk about that too. Now, before we can take this off of here, or take you can't take this out without getting this off, but you can't get this off without taking this off. And the reason that you can't get it off is because there's this triangular shaped piece right back here. See that? You know, some people have, we've, we've ran into some Mark III's before where people have taken a, a grinder and ground that off. So you can take it off and on. But don't ever do that because... Yeah, it does something. That's, yes. That's because when we bought this bike, that's what somebody did. Somebody cut it off. See, it's, it's missing right here. And what it's for is as, it's, as this thing is oiling, or the chain is spinning around, it's throwing oil, it oil runs down that point and it lubricates. It actually drips down inside. Yes, it lubricates. <laughs> There's these little openings. This bearing that's inside of here and the back side of this, and that's how oil gets in the sprag. You cut, you cut that out of there, Oil will probably still get there, but it, it's not going to just run in there like it's been doing. Like that's, it's supposed to do. That's what that's for. So as stupid as that might look to some people, that's an important thing. Or a pain in the butt because it makes it inconvenient of taking it yes. apart. You got to take but. this piece off first and yeah, that's right. the way it is. Yep. All right, we're going to remove this now and then we'll back these off the rest of the way and then we'll be able to take this plate off. Um, yep, the Belleville uh, spring washer in a way, right? Yep. Uh, we're going to need a pick. Now, there's one shim behind here. A big washer, which is all part of it. Yeah, we gotta put it back just like that. Yeah. There we go. That goes there. Okay. Now at this point, this piece comes off. piece can come out. This is the anti-backfire device. This needs to be set at so it slips at 50 foot-pounds. And, well, you don't know if it's set right unless you check it, but... <laughs> There's we no way to adjust we it. Check. There yeah, you there can... is. That's what this is. Oh, so you you turn this, and then when you get it set, then you peen it, and that's where it's at. And we set this one. We had done that because when he bought this bike, all these gears were gone. Somebody had stripped out the starter. Starter was missing. It had a cover put in there, and it was all the gears were missing. Well, we we scrounged some gears off of eBay, and uh, evidently they wore out. So that's probably why they were on eBay. Yeah, well, I thought See, it was... Because this should stick right now, and it's not. See how it's freewheeling? Yeah, it's, it's not. Right. It's not doing its thing. And I thought you were mentioning earlier that, um, that that sprag was actually new for it. It, it a was. Good one, we or, put like, it. We like put it. No, we put it in new. Now that's what slides on that bearing. This piece here goes inside of there, 
and that spins on this bearing here, so, so, we'll have to have work with these. Yeah, we need that to, work, to make the starter work. That has to not do that. Yeah, this, <laughs> this, this, like I said, this sprag is barely used. And there's don't seem to be anything wrong with it, but it's just it, not functioning. It is what it is. All right. Well, we don't need to take it all apart. We yeah, just gotta, we do. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. We got to now. Now we got to take. We got to take this out. That's the We're going to actually have this whole primary gutted because see, to get this sprocket off, you got to take this off. Oh, that's true. And you can't get this off. The, you can't get these off without the, with this in the way. Hydraulic. Chain tension. Yep. So yep. it's got to come off nick. That's the next thing. And this piece. It it might yeah. stay. Yeah. But um so now you don't take this one out. This one holds this piece to this piece. Only this and this holds it to the primary. So this is all we're interested in getting taken apart right now. Yeah, that's true, because that chain's, uh, chain don't come apart. Yep. The triplex chain. Yep, yep, you'll want to zip tie them together so they don't fly apart when I pull it out of here. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Okay, now would be the time to put your zip tie around here. Did you find a bigger one? It's Backwards. Actually, actually too, too short. A smaller, a smaller one would be handy. I think they're plenty. I think. Oh, maybe not. Let's do this. There's a lot going on up there. Solid. That won't let me go through that. Yeah. Oh well. Nice idea. Try and push that down for me, maybe. There's a needle wrench. Yeah, it should be there. <laughs> yeah, yep, I got it somewhere. There you are. We're doing this. We're gonna keep the shoes from flying out and staying primed somewhat we might start to put well, some on it later so, but well we know this is all good shape so we don't need to be taking it all apart that yeah. all apart and besides that when you squeeze it up in there like what we're doing I'm forcing it here grab that tighten it up as i squeeze them together got it yeah Okay, now it'll come out real easy. Nope. What? Mm. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, just pull them out of there. And that's the unit. Okay, now we got to take this apart. Now, we got a, we got a push rod seal on here. And that's got an O-ring inside of here. And that keeps transmission oil from migrating through and soiling your clutches. So that comes off first. Then this comes off. This hydraulic tensioner, though, I was going to mention something. This this was a new thing in the Mark Threes, right? Yep, yep. They don't, that won't interchange with them, like my 74, would it? No, you can't put it in a 74. Um. Unless well, you, unless you could really totally modify you could put something. it in there, but I don't know how you're going to mount it to it because, for one thing, the the seventy four and earlier, the the uh, primary 
uh, system that's in it isn't as opened up inside as what this would require. I don't think you could close it with this. Yeah, one. we never tried it, but it's just a thought. I was either uh, reading a comment or <laughs> from somebody, or I was just thinking about it. So, be a nice idea. Okay, I got the brake on. I think it's still in gear, right, Joe? Yeah. A socket. Yeah, a... You'll need the Whitworth. Yeah, right here. Whitworth socket. I think it's a second yep. You got the brake? Yep. Okay. Now, before you loosen that completely up, hold on a minute. I want to show you something else, too. Is it still tight? Hmm. Kinda. Okay. One thing we found too that we check we want to check when we were we took the clutch out the other night and we're seeing this. Movement. Yeah, there's movement. This is not moving. So it's not the main shaft. There's a bearing. There's a bearing back there. Oh, no. The There's drum. a bearing back here, and it's held in with a C clip, right? Or a big uh, sir clip right there. And that's supposed to be solid, okay? Now, this piece slides through there, and there's another sir clip that holds it to that. Now, it might be possible that that's all it is, but I was thinking they were tighter than that. And. Uh, so that's something we're going to check once we get this off. We're going to find out where that play is coming from. This had Loctite on it, so it's kind of snug. Okay. Here we go. Now we gotta. No, now we gotta have the puller here. We gotta get this out of here. Here it comes. There's another piece that's back there, and this is always gotta lay with these grooves facing outward, not inward. That's part of the oiling channels, yes. right? Yes. Now there's two threaded holes here, one here and one there, and your regular puller that that for a mark two or earlier bikes works, but they the Mark III takes longer bolts. Yeah, because this shaft's longer for all that stuff. Well, that's because it's deep <laughs> it's deepened in. Oh, that's the too, other yeah. one the other one is is all filled in right here. It's not milled out like yeah, I don't this need one. none of that stuff. Yeah, this one is I see. Yep. One of these, huh? I want to make sure I'm square here. I think it's three quarter. Yeah, it's probably tool's probably standard. Here's one. We got one, Joe. Yep. You wanna no stepping on the brake won't matter. Uh might have to put a big crescent on this. I get it kind of close and <sighs> I didn't get the camera turned on fast enough, but he had it 
it popped. <laughs> It'll pop. It it's yep. just a tapered shaft, isn't it? And yeah, it just, it's a tapered. You just gotta get a little bit of some leverage they're on. They're really tight when they're on. And you gotta make sure they're on. Okay, now it comes off as a set. Now there'll be spacers and, and shims on the back side too, right back here. Yeah. Make sure nothing's here. Okay. Okay, let's pull this off. Because that's all the way. We have this. You want to pull it out and see if it's tighter in this bearing? So they took the the chain off, they laid it down just like it was in the bike. We want to make sure it's going the same way when we put it back together. Here's the front sprocket. We're going to be switching that out with a different one. Yes. And then the clutch hub. We want to look at that. Yeah, you can see in here where the wear. Yeah, you can see the shaft happens. spot. Where is it? Where is it? Just move. Oh, I'll wipe it. There, you can see the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it made like a, a shiny finish on it. Right. Sometimes it's the bearings. Yeah, see this bearing, it's going to go in tight. That bearing is loose. The idea of it. Yeah, so. What's going on? That's a riveted. Mm -hmm. This one is pinned. Um, did you by chance have a bearing? I doubt that. We can get around this outside edge and we can press this bearing out and try a different bearing. This looks tight. Let me check that other clutch hub I got. So we got a couple different clutch hubs here. Um, the one earlier when we were have when it was moving, uh, we think that the bearing is probably going out. This bearing is 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 loose. Yeah. Okay. Then we got um this different. There's a couple different styles here we were just talking about. And this one here is later. the The pressure plate or the the part that the clutch rubs on is a piece they added to this. And this one is riveted on with with three large rivets. Yeah. Yep. 1971 and earlier. They just put them on with three little roll pins. These are known for coming loose. In fact, you can see this one's been ground down already once. They, they work their way out. And then they come loose, they break up, and they fall loose. And then eventually what happens, you step on the clutch, put the clutch in. This part spins around inside of here. It doesn't function like and it's it doesn't to. function like it's And it comes <clears throat> out of round. It, it's, yeah, it's, this is not the preferred one preferred one to use so we had a couple of extra ones laying around here um we're not going to use this one <laughs> no but we have another one like this one we're just going to get it ready yeah right. we got this uh clutch up here it's a decent one we just swapped the bearings out in it and it works really it seems really well anyways and uh we're ready to press this uh, hub down onto it now and doing so you want to make sure that uh the bearing is, it's got good, it's good and uh, got a piece up against it holding the inner race of the bearing. Otherwise you end up damaging the bearing when you go to press on it. Yeah, seems good. Fixed. Nice. Back on. Yeah, so this bearing's good. That just goes to show that the bearing was bad. I guess because it could have been the 
could have been the retaining rings, but it wouldn't have been the bearings, the bearing on the center hub. Oh, we wanted to check that. <clears throat> yes. While we got this wow. apart, he wants to check to see how centered that is. Okay. With yeah, my, we need a special with, tool. With my tool. Like it could come back some. Now it looks like it needs to go that way. Now it goes. Well, yeah, it's tight. That's how they are. Okay. It's real, it's, it's real close. Could it be a little looser? Eh, maybe. Maybe not. But it's not enough to where it'll throw that seal off or bend the seal. Now what we got left here is we've got a special. We got a special piece right here. It's got a groove into it. And then on the main shaft, there is a keeper. Roll the wheel over, Joe. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Right there. Okay. There's the open spot. See, it's a it's like a it's like a um circlip, but it doesn't have holes in it. And it, it snaps into it's a snap ring. It snaps into there. Okay. Okay. Now, what holds that in place is this groove. This, this piece has got to slide in over top of that. Yeah, because that piece had So like that way, it can't, it can't, by putting a lot of pressure on it, it can't grow and pop out that way. But you can shear them completely off. And then what's next is these three, well, in this case, three, but they're, boy, they're pretty tight. Probably stuck with oil or something. Yeah, they're stuck. Well, anyway, we're going to put them on there for now, but we're going to put it to back together without a chain first because we should put that on and this on and because we're changing the front sprocket, so we should be checking the alignment because we may need an extra one or maybe we got too many. And uh, so we're going to put this back on all the way and then we're going to slide this one on and we're going to lay we're not going to tighten it but we're going to push it on we're going to push it on here if I can find there it is just like that make sure it's all I mean back. that's a taper but believe me when that gets so stuck, that barely moves maybe one thousandths to, to really, any farther in. It does yeah. not grow. So it's on. So now what we want to do is we want to take and lay these right on these teeth. And we want to see where we are. And look at there. We are off. We do not need all of those shims that are on the back side of there. See there? Mm -hmm. so, so there was there was no shims behind this thing? Oh, no, there can't be because that's a taper. Right, right. Okay, then. Just clearing that up. So that the means only we have shimming, to remove that The one. only shimming is here. I thought it was kind of odd. Normally what you'll see is one thick one and like maybe one thin one. I mean real thin, like paper thin. You got something you can take like a knife. We got one on there. I'm not sure if it's the thick one or the one of the thinner ones, but we have a combination of things to figure out here. Well, what you do is you the clutch really spins well. You, up line, <laughs> you line it up on all the teeth there, and then you come down on this. Oh, look at there! Now you're touching it. I'm I'm a little tight. I'm pulling away. Not much though. It's any of the thin ones, real thin sure ones. You try that, Joe. 32 thousandths. 32 thousandths. Yeah. These, these were actually spotted together. Were they? There was a weld in there. They wasn't supposed to be. They might have galled. 
the uh, the unit the unit you remember they used to have them real uh, soft steel keeper in there oh, yeah. and the nuts used to like to come loose so in time that might have you check it mm -hmm. I think it looks pretty darn close right now You think it's pulling away a little? Oh yeah. Maybe five or ten. I think we need a thin one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just out of curiosity. Ah, fifty. Okay, so give me the other two. Yeah, that gives us sixty if they're both thirty twos, that gives us sixty four. Yeah. Yeah, that gives us just a little then. I'm going to try this again. Okay. Ooh. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that one. By the time that moves in a little bit, huh? Yeah, by the time that moves in a little bit, if it does, yeah, that, a little bit. That, that should be perfect. It'll be perfect. Way better than it was. Right. It was this much off, there fifty thousandths, or whatever the sixty, yeah. whatever it was. That's too much. You're hooking the chain up here, and if this ever falls out, you take that out. Make sure you put that back the way it came out. There's, there's a groove on the back side. That's for oiling, and that's for next to the case. So you always want to put the groove in. So I gotta put that through here. Now we're gonna put this up here. I gotta find the I gotta find the there it is. Yeah, gotta find a little keyway slot area. There it is. Okay. This goes in there. Okay, now we're gonna put, yeah. Now we gotta put it back together in exactly the opposite way we took it apart. We gotta get a cutter. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> we don't have to worry about priming it, do we? Well, it's had oil in it. Yeah, so. right. So, unlike the last one we worked on, it was dry. <laughs> so, it was all fresh. Yeah. There was two shiny nuts on that. Two, they were big. Lock washers. Okay, so we got two lock washers. I'm gonna get your uh, your torque value sheets out. There, there should be a set of sheets for Mark Three. Getting ready to put the the shifter uh, rod in there. You got to remember to tape the splines up so I don't destroy that seal in there. Yeah, there's Otherwise, a seal. we have there's to start all over. The back side of this. <laughs> so if it leaks down down the road, then we we'll have to come back in here fix it. It's the only way you can get to it. It's from the inside. Oh. Can you get it in there? You want to, you want that to go all the way through? Well, not through the seal. Yeah. I thought we could dab the splines in there. We'll put grease on the splines. 
a good idea. It's a good idea, but I don't know how successful it would be. Okay. I have a hard enough time taking the tape off. <laughs> yeah, you can see it right through here right now. Needle nose down in through there. What do you want? Huh? You want something before that? There it is. Kind of. <laughs> We're going to torque these down. The torque spec on these nuts are 15, or er, they're, yeah, 15, 15 foot pounds. Foot I was going to say that. It's a 5 16 bolt, or, and oh, so 5 16 nut. Your, Needle nose to pull your, do you pull that tape so I can get the torque wrench on it? You can see it right down through there. Oh, I can't go all right. All right, we're going to take the tape off the okay. spines down there. I'm unwinding it, pulling it off of here. There, got it. Okay, now we got to just slide it back into that. There it goes. It's back in. Okay, now we gotta torque both of those down to 15. It's almost scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, <laughs> I mean, you're only going into aluminum, pretty much. Yeah. But on this one, this is steel is steel, but that stud's in there. Yeah. Okay. Now the next step is the anti-backfire device. Now this piece can come off of here. There's another one of them rings on here, see, and that's got a groove, and that sits on here like this. It's got to be there, and that holds this gear and it rotates inside of there. Okay, just like that. Now, the other part of the bearing surface is right here. It goes into this. So now the next step. We gotta put the, the bushing on. Or we can do that later, but we gotta tighten this down or nothing. Or we can do that we, after this, right? We gotta put, yeah, we gotta put the sprag and we gotta put this on. Yeah, right now we can put this in here. Yeah, put all that together and, and put and the sprag in. And we can put in. the sprag in. Now the sprag goes. This is the inner eye race for the sprag. Right? No, it's in the Oh, gear yeah, gear. The, inner, the inner race for the sprag is that gear, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is for the, the gear we're going to be putting on. trying to think of where this one looks different so I gotta think about this for a minute it's got to go like this to start it yeah that's freewheeling so freewheeling goes see freewheeling goes like that Mm -hmm. See how the heel is rubbing? Bite would be this direction. All right. Freewheel is this direction. Bite would be this direction. So it goes in this way. And we'll test it once we put it together anyway. Well, yeah. Before I put it all together <laughs> and try starting it. There it is. Well, we can test it right now, probably. It does not go that way. Yeah, in the beginning you saw it spun both ways real easy. Yeah. The backfire device is keeping him from being able to spin it freely, but we know that works. He tried going back the other direction. Okay, then. Yeah, I'm ready for the next. Then this piece. Then the shim. Key. I like to put.
put this end in just a little bit. Okay. Now we got to put this in because this has got to go before that because of the because of the oiling tab. Right. So this only goes one way. You got to line up your Let's see, that's how that the drip drip here it works. Yeah, it comes down and it falls into these four holes as as this oil builds up on it and then it drips off there. I mean it's easy concept here. So um And if you look at it well, I got the key in it now, but I could have pulled it back. But you've seen that piece I slid in, and then there's the bearing inside of yeah. there. And all oh. the, and that's got a spiral groove. Takes, As the oil goes in there, it spirals itself into the sprag, yeah. so the sprag gets oil. It pulls it all in. It pulls it all in. We got four new clips. That's in case we go to put one of these in, and the ear breaks off. Yeah. Well, then Sometimes... Geez. Sometimes you can reuse them a couple of times if you're lucky. As uh, Clint Eastwood used to say, do you feel lucky? Yeah, luck don't usually work for me or hope. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> so... It either will or won't. If it uh, don't, well, then we'll put more new ones in. I like to hope that things are going to stay together. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, so make sure the outer one is, of course, going onto this piece. And then this is the one, one, this one or this one will end up bending back when the nut lines up with the flat, with that. Now, chances are each one of these nuts are going to be in a different location, so it might be a different ear that gets bent this time. So these are five sixteenths also? Yes. Is that fifteen foot bounds also then? Yes. And these go directly into the mo into the motor. That holds the primary and the whole works on these do. Wrong one? No, I just screw them in tight with Getting them ready first, all even. There it is, yeah. <laughs> Made it look dramatic. <laughs> yeah. It looked like you were taking a, a long, hard pull. <laughs> All right, it's going to work yeah. on bending the tabs back. Looks like we, we have... Luck. We are lucky they're going to break off. We now. should be able to bend this one. And we should be able to bend this one and the flats. So we're going to work on that right now. See how they hold. That one did it. Oh. Oh. Got one more left on this. Yeah, there you go. Don't fall off ever. Oh. 
That was a good one. This one's got a point. Yeah, this one didn't. That feel top strong? No. That one's already gone, isn't it? No, there's one there. Oh, there is one there. Just on a. Don't want it to fall out and get caught in the gears. That's one of the lower bottom. That one, yeah, that one. There we go. Yeah. That'll be the last time those get used. Yep. yep, and we got spirits for next time in case we have to get back in here. Okay. Of course. Lock that? Yeah, lock tight. We got, the, we got the Belleville washer on there. We talked about this before. This is the hell. It's a Belleville. Belleville washer. is what they call it? Yeah, I Belleville. call it a Belleville, but yeah, Belleville. It's, it's a beveled washer, but it's called the Belleville washer. And uh, what happens is, is as you tighten this up the full torque, that puts pressure on this outer part and onto this hub, and it tightens, and it, and it keeps spring pressure on it so it won't come loose, so it stays tight. And we always put blue Loctite in them, too. That's good. Now, there should be a value for this. I think I could be wrong, but I'm thinking it's 60 or 65 foot pounds. Yeah, was, the, was that the Whitworth one? Yeah. There it is. Rotor nutter, main shaft, rotor nut. I'm trying to spread that. Forty five to fifty pounds. Fifty? Forty five to forty to fifty, so forty five. Main the way that's not right. Main shaft nut the gear in gearbox. That sounds like transmission. Oh, that's back here, forty five. What's going on? It's got dried. Oh, dry. yeah, dried Loctite. We got to get that out. out of there because it's going to give us a false torque. Of course, we put Loctite in it already, so well, now we got to clean it out. Give us a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Right, so. Got cleaned up. I'm putting new Loctite in there. Oh, Belleville. Yeah, don't forget that. See, that lays in there real nice. Yeah, it's we put them in because it helps make the rotor last longer, doesn't it? Yeah, it helps in case they, they have a tendency they can get loose. And then they'll start knocking. Right. So this is torqued down to 80 foot pounds. I think that only goes to according to the. What's that? Have to get where those, where do we get those door, those uh, specs from? What's that? Uh, 80 foot pounds on this. You said it was. It was in our, in our uh, sheets that I downloaded off of the uh, Andover Norton's website. All the torque. They got all the torque values for all the models. I didn't bring my bag. 80? Oh, the money. <laughs> um, we got to probably put the clutch in first, though. Yeah, we're going to have to have the clutch in. Let's just put blue Loctite on the on this nut here. We're going to be tightening this down next. we got to put the rod in. And, and put the whole clutch in so we can set the brake. Fact. What's this is supposed to be forty five foot pounds. Yeah, the book 45. calls for the book calls for uh seventy, but that is 
way, way, way wrong. You will break that little clip we were showing you in there. <laughs> well, we can use some of them for the push rod seal. Right. Okay, so I'm going to have to hold the brake. Ready? Yep. Yep, so 45 there, and he's on the brake down. There we are. Okay. Now we're going to put a little in the push rod seal, wherever it is. Yeah, right there. Yep. All right. Put the, there's some stuff on that. Now would be a good time to put a little grease right there. That keeps that O-ring lubed then. See, there's a little O-ring in a recess. And that tightens up and squeezes right there. Yeah, where do you get that from? We've got that. We've talked Dino about it before, Dave. but yeah, Dino Dave, that's right. Off Atlantic Green, he sells them. Just a little dab will do you. Whoa. Uh, that ought to do it. Way more than I needed. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill it, drown it. Just want it to seal. This is a different size. This takes three quarters. And uh, just hold the wheel. Mm -hmm. You don't have to kill this either. You just want it tight. Yep. Now Loctite will hold it. There we go. Great. Okay, from here. this point forward, now we start pushing the clutch all together. Yeah, we're getting ready to put the clutch discs in and stuff. Um. This is a brand new Barnett's. He's had these soaked for a little while. So they're going to they're going to go in and to get to get the stack heights just right um we got what you call about a third height um steel plate. Yeah. Steel plate. It's it's it take 3 of these to make one of these. Okay. And what, well, I think it's pretty close to that. It's less than half. It's 48 thousandths. And these are uh, 100 and, no, 80, 85. <laughs> 80, 85, okay. So it's what is almost it? half. About half, a little under half. So what we do there is we put this one in first. We bury it in there. And after that, then, then a regular disc. Well, the, the clutch hub, it's got a steel disc built into it, but you put that right. one on there for a reason. Right? Right. And that, that just lays up next to it. I mean, you could have put that extra plate anywhere. <laughs> could have put it at the end, but normally we put it clear in. That saves the clutch hub. Well, it keeps it from much. getting... I didn't want it in the middle because I didn't want warpage where okay. the heat might be. That's the other piece that it's laying against is heavy, so uh -huh. it'll absorb heat.
There we are. I'll hold that. And then we put the diaphragm so it don't on. Fall out. I'll hold this. screwdriver somewhere now you always pinch them up make sure that they're seated good it does this one's not in push push in this way mm -hmm. there it goes see it <laughs> yeah <clears throat> It's real important to get that seated square all the way around. And then this should spin when, when you're done. Thank you. Yeah, there's like a darker spot and a lighter spot. Is that not showing that it's not in all the way or is it all uh, the way in? This spring was probably backwards once before. Okay. This locks up. Let's park that right now. I'll hold the brake. Okay, um, you got her on. Am I not holding it good? No. <laughs> hold, it. hold on a minute, Ben. Big long. Uh, where's the clutch slipping? No, I like the rear wheels slipping. Moving also. Huh? Rear wheels moving also. Yeah. By golly, it's holding now. We'll see. No? Clutch is slipping. Oh, clutch yeah. Is slipping. Okay, yep. stop. We're, with the clutch slipping, we're going to take this back off so this doesn't set up. And then we're thinking we're past center and it's too much of a stack. Yep, too much stack height. So we're going to take that half plate out and see if we got a different result. Well, the reason we're going to take it out is because I was wondering about that the other day. You know, you had three in there. I'm wondering if that isn't why three seven fifty ones. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that isn't why it was because it's out too far, and um, diaphragm can't function properly. Yes, yes. <clears throat> now these new barnets are thicker than the old and the other barnets on the eight fifties. They're twenty thousandths thicker. So you add that twenty thousandths to five, that's probably more than what that thin plate is. You know what I mean, Joe? Mm-hmm. Try to get you going all the way in to get this. Yeah. All right, we're going to get in there and get back to where we were. All right, so we removed the half plate like we were talking. Now we're putting the clutch back together. It's quite the, it's quite the thing, you know. <laughs> You can really easily, easily get overwhelmed at looking at that when you open it up. This whole uh, primary but system. But it's actually pretty simple once you think about it. Once you, once you take it apart and put it back together. You got to do it in a certain order, but... Clipper in there. In there screwdriver. Yeah, there you
flat to in just a little bit. Okay. Now, you want to relock tight that? Or? No, we'll see what it does here. Yeah, it still looks wet in there, so. Yeah. There it is. We did exactly. it better than last time. <laughs> That's exactly what the problem was. <laughs> right. Now we need to put the stator part on. So we got the stator back on here, and usually there's like a. Sometimes we check it with a feeler gauge, but I think we're okay with this. You should have these. These Mark Threes normally don't come out of out of center because these are milled and they they fit just right. They're right but spot. But it's always a good. It's always a good idea to take an eight thousandths and make sure they it rubs all the way around. And we can do that here in a second. Yeah, because you can't get it unless this is. Yeah, you can't get your true reading without this being tightened down. You know, we took those washers out of there. Look how, see, now this looks more normal. Mm -hmm. See that? Right. So it's, there's more hanging out than there well, was see, before? Was. See, when we took this apart, this nut was like way out here when it was all in there. And we, I thought that was odd the other night when we took that apart. And I said to Joe that normally when you have this in here like this, there's like a lot of bolt normally sticks yeah, out like you're that. Running, yeah, because you're running that in until it touches. Right. Right now it's touching right now. So I'm going to back it off about between a quarter and a third. Then you tighten that down. And then you tighten it. So these are what? These are 5 sixteenths also? Yeah, they're 5 sixteenths. So those will torque down to... 15 foot pounds probably. I think the book actually calls for those to be about 12. 12, okay. And there's just enough clearance for a, a thin wall socket to fit in there. Otherwise you get conflicted with the, the stator on a, anything bigger than a thin wall. Stud nut. Well, no, 15. 15 foot see this this used to move and it moved out which allowed for more stack height which was wrong but well, we didn't know that because now it's tight that's why this bolt sticking out that along with them two extra or this really thick washer that's that's not on there no more and because all of that would have brought everything out that and this play that this used to have. See, it doesn't do that. And it won't do that no more. So that tightened everything up. So that's also what made this not needed before we needed it. And we didn't know why. And those washers were in there from the first time. Yep, we, we never it. changed nothing. We never checked it. No, we well, never we, checked it. We just assumed we everything just was right. Put all those gears in and went for yep. what they had there. So yeah, so we fixed, we changed out the bearing on the hub. And then we found out the shims were wrong, so that's what now we're yeah. that's where we're at now. Yes. So here we are, we're checking the clearance here. And you can get it all the way around, looks like. Yep. So we're Perfect. good there. Perfect. This is torqued down to fifteen foot pounds. Yep, fifteen foot pounds. So and I think should be good. We're pretty much ready to put the finish this up and put the outer cover on, huh? Yep. We could uh put it in neutral. 
Well, we put the cover on, hit the starter. Yeah, we could do yeah. that. See if it actually works. You gotta have the channel <laughs> off going on. It works. Yeah, we're gonna try starting it now. Well, not start it. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Everybody? not start it. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. She's ready. Yeah, before it would just like. It just spun. <laughs> yeah. So, sweet. Let's get ready to finish this up now. Yes. Yeah, so this bike here is the bike that we did the, the we showed the starter, uh, the cables and stuff on when we were talking about the starter rebuild and how, the, why they were, didn't work and how to make it work better than it used to. So you can look for that video, but this was the bike and that's the starter we were showing that starting up. And the starter was working then. Yeah. Years. Make sure you put this in right where you want it. It's too high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about there. Might have to jiggle it a little. Yep, there it is. Okay, got it. Hmm. Now we need a Phillips, don't we? Great big one. I'll get it. Yeah, this bike has all the the posi drive. Are they posi drive or are they Phillips? Yeah, the posi drive uh, screws. Like original. Sometimes uh, we end up putting like Allen's on this stuff, but. Let's take this primary head takes all outer primary takes all the same size screws. Yes. Yeah, looks like they're all the same length all the way around. Except for this one. This one goes into the starter. That's right. Yeah. It's real long. It's like three inches long. But all the rest of them are all the same. You got to pull the holes in it. You know we got the screws all tightened down. This is about 60 to 80 inch pounds. We ended up uh, using the screwdriver and kind of just go until we knew that it was tight. And then now we're going to open this up and fill it with oil, which we end up putting in. Mobile one, 2050. And yeah, it was like, how much? It was like 300 or 500? 300. Or, yeah, 300. I knew it was 300. I showed up with that. I took the plug out for fill. CC. I mean, yeah, so we chances up, are we won't. Right, it might not. It'll be right there at the window. Maybe we won't put any in. <laughs> wow. Nice having that big tool. What's that? Nice having this tool. Yeah. Maybe I'll screw that by now. So you put the 300 cc in and then, or you just run it oil in until it starts seeping out the seep hole. Until it starts down. dripping out, but, but it should start getting real close to dripping out at 300. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> Hurt. <laughs> yeah, no. There must have been a plug taken out. It'd be the drain plug. Ready? Yeah. Now we're going to be off. Now we got to use a C pole. <laughs> well, we'll use the C pole. We'll just pour a little of it. All right, well, we got that drain plug tight. Now we're going to put it oil in until starts it starts to, to come bubble out. out. Just pouring a little bit at a time. Because you don't want to. Nope. 
over flood it. I seen something in there. It's starting to oh, it's starting to come out. No. Yep, it's starting to work its way out. Okay. And make sure that you got a good O-ring behind this nut. Otherwise they leak. Behind the screw, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I get that off there so it don't <laughs> all burn on there and stuff. Yeah, now that we had oil dripping everywhere. Normally we don't we try not to have that happen. Yeah. Could have avoided that, but oops. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, and that tightened down and might fire it up and see if it runs starts. Should start. On a Mark III, this bolt back here threads all the way through and catches a ground wire because the Mark III has a Zener diode on both sides. So it has to have a ground on there. So they put a long bolt on each one of these. Because on the old Mark IIs, there's three studs. Hold that while you put the nut on. It's tight. I know, but you gotta tighten the other half. This is gonna go. Yeah, I'll see if I can see the. There's a ring back there. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Whoops, there, you there go. it is. You see it. Yep. real important that that ground's on there too because otherwise your electrical system doesn't work right and there's really nothing wrong with the factory electrical system yeah we just a lot of people try to throw it all away because they don't understand it we didn't have that hooked up and we end up getting the starter to work so i mean but we have other things like well, the yeah, that stuff is, and... that's only for charging yeah okay where we got the foot peg all attached, and I think we're ready to see if Take we can start up. and start it. Unless you want to, you don't want to start up there. No, that's fine. We well, when it. we do that, everything shakes. Oh yeah, that's true. We'll leave a heck of a mess. So, soft lift and start her up. All right. So, in closing here, kind of, we we're going to talk about a couple of things here. And then we're going to take this off the lift and start her up. But um. When, like we said earlier in the video, that when he bought this bike, it had this in it, and this was all taken out. We think that that is what caused this sprag to wear out prematurely, because well, the gears, yeah, the, it caused this. See how blued it is? Yeah, it's There's, it's worn down, no, and yeah. the inside edge of this sprocket is worn down, worn out. Enough so then to, what happens yeah, is, just when wheel. you put this in here, <clears throat> as soon as I get it back in here. And it's not supposed to go both ways. That's no. what the sprag is designed to not. It's supposed to not do that. Not go one way. So it's, it's past its, it's past its, it's tolerance. You can't bite. So it's like, you were saying something about 3,000 tolerance or something? Well, there was... We don't have it in front of us right now, but there was there is measurements for what that shoulder of this piece and the inside shoulder of that piece, and both of these when we put the new sprag in it the last time, we were right at the very edge, if not one or two thousandths over. And that's when you replaced right. this. We replaced this at the same time, but well, it was, it was too late. Too late. But we didn't have this gear or this gear. And so that's when he, Joe made the decision to buy this whole set like this 
from C and W. They make that, and they tighten those tolerances tighter than what Norton did. So this should never be an issue again. There's a couple outcomes that could happen here. We could have actually this would have been good, and the gear on the starter could have been what was causing the freewheeling. Yeah. But we found out right away when we took it apart. Everything spun. And it spun back and forth. We knew that that was wrong. So, anyway, um, yeah, let's take it off lift and start it up. So, of course, we're not at my garage, Jesse's Vintage Garage, <laughs> obviously. Um, but um, we're at Joe's place, and he's our friend, and we worked on this. And, and then, uh, anyway, I'll just go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead and start it up right here. It's got some other bikes and stuff, and of course, it's got uh, nice uh, blown-up pictures of all the <laughs> the breakdowns of the of the parts book of the, for the Nortons and stuff. This wall art there. <laughs> so anyway. gas in it. <laughs> That'd help. <laughs> Should be able to run one petcock though to fill it up. Oh. They're really dry out. Yeah, yeah. It's getting wet there. I got gas in one zone. There, there it goes. Well, just a minute ago, he was checking out the clutch there and make sure it was all uh, working properly and good. And he's got the, the lever, the shifter in the right spot for his foot and everything. So we only got that right. So everything, the, the starter's working great and it starts right up. So it kind of comes to an end here on redoing this uh, primary and all the Sprague system. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed everything and we'll see you again soon.